Thanks to all of you for joining us for this evening of music, which we hope you will find both edifying and enjoyable. Uh, the first two pieces are selections that were written, obviously, for Easter Sunday. Jesus Christ is risen today. That's the hymn we sing. Bum, 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 bum. And that was the same text. And then the, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's be glad in him. Uh, the next one is a, uh, is a piece that is was written by J.S. Bach. Yeah, you know him. Right? And it, it was also for the season of Easter time. And it, it is where we are right now in the church here. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And of course we believe that. We live that. Every day we live in the in the understanding that we will share Christ's resurrection. But there are many times along the way that life is what? Difficult. Hard. It sucks. <laughs> and sometimes it is because you are a Christian. And Bach understood this. So he wrote this piece, which is a twisty, churny thing of, that, that portrays the life of the Christian in the midst of Easter time. Uh, of course, the victory is there. But the twisting and turning, sometimes we don't understand why. <clears throat> he got it.
Now, if you take a look at the next text that we're going to see for you, this comes from Bohemia, Middle Europe, all right? Uh, Czechoslovakia, Saxony, it's unmet area, where the Lutheran Reformation served. And it's an interesting text because the poetry reminds us of the New Testament story's connection to the Old Testament stories, especially in this particular case, the example that is given is that of uh, Goliath and David. Now, who won that battle? Right? Yes. And so Goliath is postured as the dramatic force of sin, death, and the devil. And our David... Yep, you get an A. <laughs> and we'll get an E. Okay.
Now I'm going to turn the program over to my friend and colleague, Ann Fredrickson. Now, if you talk to anybody who was on the tour, you'll know what our last day was like. Perhaps. But you weren't there, so you don't know. It was like the Oregon Trail in reverse. Not even the Mormons could have imagined it. Anyway, so Anne had to get up to the cities because one of her daughters was involved in the concert and she wanted to be there. So she flew out. And so she wasn't with us as we passed the continental divide. I don't know how many times can you do that, like seven times on that highway. It just keeps going. Continental divide, yay, it's going to stop snowing now. We're going down. And then, oh, yeah, it was very, very nasty last night. But our drivers got us here. And they would have gotten us here sooner if one of our two buses hadn't died after we had left Salt Lake City. Boom. So I have photographs of us moving all of this equipment from one bus to the other and hoping that everything would end up. So, and then, then the other bus was doing great, great guns for Minnesota. And we stopped at that rest stop in Chamberlain, you know, with second Kalavavia, whoever the statue is. And we, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that was the middle of the night. We thought, oh, we're almost home. And then we got back on the bus. And I'm sitting there next to my wife, and we're hanging on to one another because that's a good thing to do. Uh, having a spouse is a good thing. <laughs> hanging on to one another when you're scared, and all of a sudden, the door went, whoosh. you know, and those doors are airlocked. And whoosh, happened, and then. <laughs> and it just died. It just stopped going. Oh, and that happened four times. And the last one was right outside of Mountain Lake this morning. <laughs> and we were there like, what are we going to do? You know? But we made it home. So thanks to God, of course. But even more, the students, they were great about it. Their, their spirits were... Oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> it really wasn't that. It was mostly, I got to home! I can see, I can see Mankato. Let me get there. You know, the horses were going to the barn. So we made the horses. The horses finally made it to the barn. And here we are. So thanks. We really doubly appreciate your presence because of that. It was, we had plenty of food and the toilet in the back wasn't totally full. <laughs>
Yeah, so I got a whole night of sleep last night. I <laughs> and my children had a lovely concert. I was really glad I didn't miss it, although that was not without some fear because the Denver airport was closed. Snow! It is May! <laughs> right? But they managed to route me through Chicago, and I got home in the nick of time, so that was good. And I freed up a seat on the bus for somebody else to crunch it. <laughs> so that was my contribution. Um, that last piece that we just performed comes from a larger work by Benjamin Britten called um, A Ceremony of Carols. And it's a piece I've been in love with since my college days when I sang it for its rich imagery, the poetry, the idea of this little baby being a stealth weapon. Um, and it's just an amazing piece. And I've done it here three times in my 24 years. The first time with piano, which it sounds great with. The second time, we had a student who actually worked it up on guitar, so that got a little bit closer. But Britton wrote it for harp and treble choir, and so I have been waiting 24 years for a harpist. <laughs> and we finally got one. Our next piece is by a contemporary English composer named Alan Bullard, and he um, found Benjamin Britten to be a real inspiration musically. And so you'll hear moments in this piece that sort of echo what happens in this little babe, primarily in how the voices sort of chase each other around. So Sorsum Corda by Alan Bullard.
Our next number will be quite different, um, as you'll see in a moment. Um, comes out of the spiritual tradition that predates the Civil War, also became an anthem during the Civil Rights Movement, and was recorded by Aretha Franklin in 1972. We're not singing her version. <laughs> um, but the whole piece is about freedom, freedom from slavery, freedom from death. And I chose it because of its title. Oh Mary, don't you weep? Tell Martha not to mourn. And that's our name, so it was a no-brainer. <laughs> And then this semester, 
when I opened registration for hand bells, I had almost double the number of students that I had bells for. And I thought, oh, God provides. And so we now have a hand chime and a hand bell choir. You're going to hear first from the hand chimes. They've got a lovely, lovely, beautiful timbre, very warm and sweet. Um, and then we will bring the rest of the hand bells in and do a piece together. Father, and during this piece we will be receiving an offering.
giving her a real treat. That harp that I spoke of waiting so long for, we've had a marvelous harpist in Cynthia Krause for three years now. And uh, she, gra she graduated this spring. We didn't want to let her go. I toyed with, you know, playing with her grades a little bit. Decided that wouldn't be ethical. Um, she did her senior recital this spring, and she is going to uh, play one of the pieces that she played on her senior recital for you this evening, Versus Rus, which means Russian lullaby. Cynthia?
Every Wednesday evening here in the chapel, this group uh, gathers to lead whatever congregation we have in the office of Vespers. And part of that Vesper office, and you're all invited to come, We're, we don't really want to keep it a secret, <laughs> but we also want you to be here because you want to be here, uh, is uh, that we sing some of the great canticles from the scripture. What is a canticle? This is one of the questions I ask you in my class that I teach on hymnodine liturgics. What's a canticle? Well, the Old Testament is full of psalms, right? There's a bunch of them. How many? 150. That's a lot. Now, if you were a monk or in a monastic community, you would sing all 150 psalms every single week. Not once through the year, not once a month, but every single week you'd sing all 150. <clears throat> this is what Martin Luther did. And, 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 and he wasn't unusual. He just did it because that's what they did. But those words, they dug into his head. He couldn't quite figure out how it was that the psalmist could rejoice in the righteousness of God. Because God's righteousness is what? It's perfect. Who in this room is perfect? Mercy sakes. Every week. And in the process of singing those 150 psalms every week, he got his head around this idea that the righteousness of God isn't something to be afraid of, but rather it's something that has been given to us. So that's one of the things that happens in Vespers. We sing the psalms. Then we also sing the canticles. Canticles are uh, songs from the Bible that are not in the book of Psalms. Right? The book of Psalms has 150. But there's others. The Gospel of Luke has <coughs> such a rich batch of them. Mary's song. Simeon's song. Zechariah's song. Oh, and the angels, just in case you missed it. Glory and Excelsis. They're all there. Now, this one, the Te Deum Laudamus, is a canticle that's not in the Bible, but it was probably written in the 4th century when the church was having to defend itself. The 4th century. Now, Islam came in the 7th century, but before that, even among the Christians, there was a debate about, and the big question, of course, was, who is Christ? Who is Christ? Was he forever? Or was he created? Oh, it's just a, an interesting story. You should read about this. Te Deum Laudamus was written to uh, remind, to help the people to celebrate the idea that Jesus Christ was one with the Father and with the Spirit. And it's a happy song. It's a happy song. We have the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and we have the Te Deum Laudamus. Those are the biggies that say who we are. So when those people come to your door, <coughs> on whatever day it is, usually on Saturday morning, you answer it and you sing in their face, We praise thee, O God! And trust me, they'll leave. They'll leave. <laughs> but you don't need to. Please stay.
That piece was composed by one of our most recent alums, Tony Cordes. So we <laughs> concerned about the bus. <laughs> I'm getting married this weekend. <laughs> yeah, get me through the storm. We made it so far. So it's up to you now, Tony. If you're not at the altar, it's not our fault. <laughs> so please come and join us on my heart if you want to sing. We've got sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses. And we have, oh, we have an exodus from the balcony. It looks like an altar call. <laughs> we should take another operation. <laughs> yes, Tanner. Travel home. <laughs> 